OpenAI just dropped GPT-5 Codex, their most powerful coding model yet. It can take on massive projects, debug, refactor, and keep working on its own for more than seven hours straight. Developers are already using it to review code and catch problems faster than ever. At the same time, OpenAI is quietly moving back into robotics with hints that humanoid systems are on the horizon. And on top of that, we now have the largest study ever of how hundreds of millions of people are using ChatGPT in daily life. Everything is shifting at once, and the scale of it is hard to ignore. All right, so GPT-5 Codex. This is basically the most powerful programming model they've released so far, a special version of GPT-5, fine-tuned for software engineering. And the thing that makes it stand out is how it can actually keep working on a task for more than seven hours straight without getting tired. For a model that's essentially designed to act as a coding partner, that's a big deal. Now, Codex itself isn't new. OpenAI's been building it out for a while. They launched the Codex command line interface back in April, then the web version in May, and just a couple of weeks ago, they merged everything into a single unified experience tied to ChatGPT accounts. That way you can move seamlessly between your local development environment and the cloud without losing context. What's new today is that GPT-5 Codex has become the default engine behind all that, whether you're using it in the terminal, in VS Code, on the web, or even on your phone. The core idea here is that GPT-5 Codex has been trained with real-world engineering work in mind. We're talking about building projects from scratch, adding features and tests, debugging, doing large-scale refactors, and reviewing code. Instead of spitting out snippets that might or might not compile, it's designed to behave like a teammate who sticks with you for the long haul. The way it handles time is really interesting. It adapts dynamically. If you're asking for something small and clear-cut, it'll respond in seconds. If you're asking for something massive, like a full refactor of a large repository, it can grind away independently for up to seven hours, iterating, testing, fixing errors, and eventually delivering a working result. In testing, this made a real difference. On the SWE Bench Verified Benchmark, which is a set of 500 software engineering tasks, GPT-5 Codex scored 74.5% accuracy. GPT-5 by itself was at 72.8. That may sound like a small bump, but in this context, every percentage point is huge because the tasks are real bugs and fixes pulled from open source projects. And when it comes to refactoring tests, the jump is even more dramatic. GPT-5 managed 33.9% accuracy there, while GPT-5 Codex hit 51.3. That's a pretty clear indicator that it's not just better at writing code, it's better at handling the gnarly, messy jobs that happen in big, mature code bases. Now, these days, turning an idea into a real product feels harder than it should. Sketches, wireframes, endless handoffs, and weeks lost before you even see something working. Rocket, who's sponsoring today's video, changes all of that. It's an AI builder that lets you go from a simple prompt or Figma design straight to a fully functional app or website in minutes. You can ask in plain language, make me a modern landing page for a newsletter or build a dashboard with login and filters. And Rocket generates a polished, production-ready build instantly. And it doesn't stop there. You can iterate naturally by asking for changes or jump into the console to tweak code directly. Want to deploy? Download the project, push it to GitHub, or launch on the web right away. Rocket even handles the backend automatically with things like Stripe and databases wired up out of the box. Whether it's a web app, internal tool, mobile app, or landing page, Rocket gets you from vision to live product faster than anything else I've seen. Try it free today, the link's in the description. OpenAI actually shared some numbers from internal usage. In the bottom 10% of cases where tasks were super simple, GPT-5 Codex used 93.7% fewer tokens than GPT-5. It's more efficient, quicker, less wordy. On the flip side, in the top 10% of hardest tasks, it went the other direction. It thought more, spent twice as long reasoning, editing, testing. Basically, it knows when to sprint and when to settle in for a marathon. That dynamic thinking time is what Sam Altman and the team seem most excited about. 
speaking of Altman, within just two hours of launch, he posted that GPT-5 Codex was already handling 40% of all Codex traffic. And by the end of the day, it was on track to take over half. That's adoption at a ridiculous speed. And the comments from developers were mixed, but telling. A lot of people are impressed by how well it handles complex projects. Others are a bit worried about subscription budgets because remember, Codex Access comes bundled into ChatGPT Plus Pro, Business, Edu, and Enterprise plans. The Plus, Business, and Edu tiers give you a few coding sessions per week, while Pro lets you spread the work across multiple projects, basically covering a full work week. Enterprise plans give you pooled credits for teams, and Business can buy more credits if needed. And soon, for people using the Codex CLI with API keys, GPT-5 Codex will also be accessible directly via API. When it comes to code reviews, GPT-5 Codex really shows what it can do. In tests on open source repositories, GPT-5 made about 13.7% incorrect comments, while GPT-5 Codex cut that down to just 4.4%. At the same time, the share of high impact comments jumped from 39.4% with GPT-5 to 52.4%. It also made fewer comments overall, about 0.93 per pull request compared to 1.32, so you get less noise and more useful feedback. Inside OpenAI, it's already reviewing the majority of pull requests and catching hundreds of problems every day before human reviewers even step in. Part of this is tied to the upgrades OpenAI rolled out to the Codex ecosystem. The CLI has been rebuilt around agentic workflows. You can now share screenshots, wireframes, charts, basically build up shared context without dumping a ton of text prompts. Codex will track progress with a to-do list. It has tool integrations like web search and MCP for external systems. And the terminal UI has been cleaned up with clearer tool calls and diffs. Approval modes are simplified into three, read only with explicit approval, auto with workspace access but external approval, and full access where it can read files anywhere and run network commands. Plus, it can compact conversation state making long coding sessions less of a memory burden. The IDE extension is another big part. It connects codecs into VS Code, cursor, and forks of those, letting it preview changes and co-edit code. Because it can use context from the files you've opened or the code you've highlighted, prompts can be shorter and still yield the right results. And you can move back and forth between cloud and local work without breaking the flow. If you've got a long running cloud task and want to make final tweaks, you just open it in your IDE and the context carries over. The cloud setup itself has gotten faster too. They've cut the average task completion time by 90% thanks to container caching. Codex can now auto set up its own environment by scanning for common install scripts. And with configurable internet access, it can grab dependencies on the fly with commands like pip install. And on the front end side, you can actually upload design specs or bug screenshots. Codex will spin up its own browser, look at the UI, iterate, and then attach a screenshot of the result to the task or the at GitHub pull request. One thing OpenAI is stressing is safety. Codex runs in a sandboxed environment by default with network access disabled unless explicitly allowed. That helps prevent harmful actions and reduces the risk of prompt injections. Developers can adjust the settings based on their tolerance, granting full access if they need web search or MCP connections, but keeping it locked down otherwise. And every task comes with citations, terminal logs, and test results so you can audit what it did before merging anything. They're clear that Codex should be treated as an additional reviewer, not a replacement for human eyes. Now, while everyone's busy watching Codex, OpenAI has also been quietly making moves in robotics again. Remember, they shut down their robotics research in 2020, basically saying the lack of training data was the problem. Well, after a five-year pause, job postings started showing up again back in January, and now Wired has reported that they're clearly ramping up. The focus is on teleoperation, simulation, sensing, and prototyping, and they're hiring people like Chen Chu Li from Stanford who worked on humanoid household robots. That suggests pretty strongly they're targeting humanoid systems, general purpose robots that could help push toward AGI. It's not confirmed outright, but all the signals point in that direction. There's also the question of how people actually use ChatGPT. 
OpenAI's econ team with Harvard's David Deming analyzed about 1.5 million conversations, the biggest look at consumer use so far, and with roughly 700 million weekly users, it gives a real-world snapshot. The headline, adoption has broadened fast. In January 2024, about 37% of users had typically feminine names. By July 2025, that was 52%, basically mirroring the adult population. Growth is especially strong in lower income countries, rising more than four times faster than in richer ones. Most chats are everyday stuff, getting guidance, information, and writing. Roughly half of messages are asking, using it as an advisor. 40% are doing, drafting, planning, coding, and 11% are expressing and play. About 30% is work-related and 70% personal, both climbing. The real value shows up in decision support, better choices, higher productivity, and usage deepens as models improve and people find new use cases. That's where things stand right now. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.